Uh, all right, so let's uh, call to order the Upper Captiva Civic Association general membership meeting for April 27th, 2022. Melissa, would you like to do a quick roll call? At least board members. Okay. Sorry, uh, board members present, Swin, Bill, David, well, Swin Swinford, Bill Fry, David Volney, Melissa Heverly, Ann Lindner, Kevin Downs, Paul Garrett, Jeremy Freeman, Mar Marlene Fox. Did I get everybody? Yep, yep. Okay. All right. And, and just take the best notes you can on everyone else who's in attendance. Um, all right, first thing up is, uh, does anyone have any additions, changes, or deletions you would like to make to the agenda? Anything you'd like to change? Bill Fry? I'd like to add a, a topic after seven and before eight, uh, so we can talk about the uh, the next board of directors meeting that's scheduled for next Wednesday. Okay. Any uh, anything else? Everyone okay with that? Do we do we need a an actual second or anything on that? You want to just add that? I'll, I'll second it if we need it. Mm -hmm. Unless there's anybody opposed, I think by consensus we could agree. Yeah. yeah. Anyone opposed to it? All right, we'll just add that. So uh, add is number seven. Talk about board meeting next week. Okay. Any other additions, changes, deletions? Oh, Paula, you have your hand up. Hey, just wanted to um, see if we could talk real quickly about the guidebooks and what people's input is for that, for those. Um, do you want to, well, we can just, you can just do that under um, your committee report. Do you want to okay. do that? Yep. I'll just bring it up then. Cool. All right, uh, moving on, we need to approve the minutes from the January 26, uh, 6, 2022 membership meeting. I read through earlier, everything looked fine to me. Any input from other board members on that one? Move we approve as written. Yeah, do we have a motion to approve? I move that we approve as written. 17. Do you have a second? Design. I'll second. Kevin, second. All in favor of approving the minutes from January 22nd? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. We move hey, on. Lynn, before, yep. you go, before you go past that one, um, do we want to wait for the previous board meeting minute approval until the next board meeting? Yeah, I, I, I generally do the board, you know, minutes in the board meeting and the general in the general, if that's all right. Yeah, no problem. Cool, cool. Uh, all right, so next to number six is board resignations and appointments. I'm going to blow through this pretty quick. Uh, um, if, if anyone uh, on you know, has any questions or comments, you know, feel free to ask and we can dive into it. Uh, when yeah. Bill's got his hand up, I believe. Oh, did you have your hand up, Bill? I, I did. Um, I, I would just suggest, it was about your comments on the uh, board minutes. Um, recall that uh, it's that last board meeting that you're gonna talk about in a few minutes um, that, that I became the treasurer. I, that the board's gonna need to approve those before I can go to the bank. <clears throat> they're, okay. likely to they're likely to require, uh, in addition to the state uh, filing, um, the board meeting minutes that the event happened. Got it. Did we post those minutes to this meeting? So, I would just suggest that that um, we we all gave comments, or at least you and I did. To yeah, we did. We 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 gave feedback right after. So okay, um, so, I'm cool with doing that. So Let's just final my suggestion would be to finalize those and send them out for final acceptance by. Uh, email okay uh so do we have a motion to approve the last board meeting minutes from hold on one second i gotta pull up my calendar guys uh that would have been april 6th 
to move? Yes. With with the changes that that uh, we've all provided to Melissa. Yeah. Do we have a second? I second it. All right. Any discussion? All right. All in favor of approving the April uh, six board of directors uh, meeting minutes? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. So approved. All right, so now we'll roll into number six, which is uh, board resignations and appointments. It's been a flurry of activity uh, since our last general meeting. Uh, during the last four to five weeks, uh, we had Aaron Lavallee resigned. Uh, and then uh, we started the process of uh, appointing uh, a new board member to her seat. And right around the time that we were doing that, uh, Helen Justice also resigned from the board. So we had um, uh, we had a few, well, really two valid candidates uh, throw their hat in the ring for these appointments. And uh, unanimously, they were appointed. And th those are Kevin Downs, Kevin? big wave and Jeremy Freeman and we welcome them to the board uh, along with that Helen was the treasurer uh, at, at the time of her resignation so the board uh, voted to appoint Bill Fry to succeed her as treasurer any comments any questions from anyone I'd like to add comment Twin. Yep. Um, just so that I mean the, the attendees to the call here today um, since it's a general membership meeting some of them weren't involved in any of the um, previous board meetings or special call board meetings um, which we did advertise this the uh, you know the vacancies uh, out the vacancy out there and took input from like nominations from the public or from the membership excuse me just know that that process was done a little differently this time than we had in the past. So those that haven't been in, you know, involved or saw those communications, that that was done. So there were those, you know, that, that was a, a process, not just the, the board going to find someone they might like to, to nominate. We actually solicited from the membership nominations, and then we went through the process of interviewing and selecting those replacements. It, just a matter of clarification that we haven't done that in the past and it was done this time and it would be done in the future in our, I think that's how we agreed we would go about it. Yeah, new, definitely new, new process and, and uh, I think a warranted process to give everyone the chance to, to be on the board who wants to be on the board. Uh, any, anyone else? Questions, comments? All right. We will move on uh, to the association financials. I'm gonna hand that over to Mr. Fry. So as the agenda says, we're, we're in transition. I, I had a good conversation with Helen uh, Justice this afternoon, a couple of hours, hours ago, actually. <clears throat> so um, she's passed on the details of, of where the accounts are and, and uh, logins. I've been able to get into uh, all of the existing accounts uh, I spent this morning uh, setting up an, an online bank uh, that's easier to work with as opposed to brick and mortars that require you to come in and give a blood sample, I think, a DNA. Because uh, you can't do it by phone, you can't do it on email, you can't do it by, by Zooms. Um, the bank that, uh, that uh, I set up is, is called Bluevine. Uh, and the idea there is, is that uh, if we can manage at least some of the months to either hit their minimum debit card spend, which is $500 per month, or minimum $2,500 ACH deposits, we can get 1.2% um, interest annually, so, so just under one-tenth of 1% 1 per month, uh, on the uh, $100,000 uh, that's in the <clears throat> Island Access Fund. Uh, so we'll be working our way through that. Uh, I've, we added um, uh, Swin and Paula to the uh, to the account, the new account that was set up this morning. 
and I'll be adding them to the SunTrust uh, Truist accounts um, when I can get down there and, and go into the, uh, the branch. Uh, the whole idea is, is to provide um, more financial information, not just to the entire board, but to the membership uh, for transparency. Um, and uh, subject questions, that's really all I'm prepared to talk about right now since I haven't had time in the last two hours to put together a financial report. Yeah, thanks Bill. Yeah, I think we can get to uh, more detail and more structure at, at the next meeting yeah. and everything. But Bob? Oh, we can't hear you. Doesn't show that you're muted, but we can't hear you. Does your computer have a microphone available, um, Bob, a chance? Hey Bob, do you wanna do you wanna type uh, out your question in the in the chat? Uh Am I on now? Yeah, yeah, we got you now. We got you now. Okay, the only uh, question was, what was the name of the bank, Bill, that you had set up the deal on? What's it called? The name of the bank. The it's online. called uh, bluevine.com. Uh, it, it's, it's an online financial um, uh, fintech kind of organization, but they're connected. Are, are, you, are you saying Blue Vine? Blue Vine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not wine, like like the. <clears throat> okay. but, but yes. Thank you. Cool, cool. Any other questions for Bill or, or regarding current financial? We'll we'll have a uh, Bill get everything and and in short order, he'll get a financial update out to the board and and we can probably get it out to membership via email at some point. Good, all right, we'll move on to the next. Uh, this is where Bill, you wanted to insert yeah. talking about next week's board meeting. Yeah, yes, I'd like to make a motion uh, that we cancel um, next week's board meeting and pick up uh, at the regular scheduled meeting <clears throat> the first Wednesday of, uh, of June. Um, we're gonna get into what all the different committees are doing. And I think most of the committees are gonna pitch um, uh, member involvement and, and so there'll be some organizing additional I may have organizing to come out and go back uh, in I, i've so, lost the picture so, so so i'm i move that we cancel next wednesday's board of directors meeting next scheduled one would be the first wednesday of june there we go is, is there a second second okay. any discussion um yeah i just want to make it clear to the to the membership that are on online there you know bylaws wouldn't require a monthly board meeting we've done that to to try to do like shorter more frequent board meetings so it was a an election that we chose to do so there's no requirement in the bylaws that so we're not violating anything there simply this is trying to uh, circle the resources for the, the following month so i think it's more of a, a an elective kind of decision not a bylaw concern that line in line yeah. with Everybody. I, I support that. I think that um, I don't think that we will have a lot to update each other on um, next week. And I think that we should focus on committee work. So. Anyone else? Comments? All right. Uh, all in favor of uh, skipping the May 4th, 2022. Board of Directors meeting, aye. 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 All opposed? All right. That was easy. OK, uh, next that brings us to uh, committee reports. So uh, this is somewhat new since our last um, general membership meeting. And it's, it's a structural change uh, with UCCA where we've created uh, multiple, right now four different committees 
that are um, chaired by board members. Uh, they're anywhere from two to, to three board members uh, plus me on each committee. And those committees are uh, government affairs, communications, membership and re revenue generation, and community. And our goal is to have these committees working, uh, you know, not just uh, once a quarter or once a month. They're, they're ongoing uh, sort of living committees that are, are working on events, on growing membership, on engaging with you know, our county or, or other you know, government or infrastructure entities that affect the island. Um, and then you know, communication falls largely with David and, and Melissa uh, is on his committee um, with just communicating everything out to membership and, and to the island. So our goal uh, is to get this committee structure really working for the organization and for the island. And, and the further goal is to reach out to membership and have members also be on these committees with the board members. Because um, it's, it's only as we're getting active feedback from the community that we know what we should be working on. The nine of us can get together and, and have a conversation and go, well, we need to work on this, but you know, what do our 110 members think we should be working on, right? And, uh, and so with that, I'll just, um, I'll hand it off to, to Ann Lindner to um, just go into government affairs and each committee will just give a, a brief update on what they're working on. And um, I guess after each one, you know, uh, if anyone has questions or suggestions or comments, just, you know, we'll take those. So thanks, Swin. Um, I think we've got a couple of things cooking in government affairs right now. Um, number one is that Bill is still working on um, outreach to the post office to talk about getting our own zip code. And I think part and partial with that, a question to the membership about whether folks are interested in that will follow in, um, one of the um, outreaches that SWIN and, and UCCA does. Um, and then secondly, the, we've got underway an outreach calendar. Um, the idea behind that would be like if there's a county commissioner's meeting or say a Captiva Civic Association meeting that we would publish that calendar with the links. And if folks want to either listen in on those meetings or, you know, have a contact person for some of those organizations that would all sort of be in one spot. Um, we're still working on pulling that together. Bill started out um, about a week and a half ago and um, we've got some additions to add to that, um, but I think it will be helpful for the organization and for Islanders in general. Um, and then the only other thing I'll bring up is uh, we did have a discussion this past month about setting up a meeting with our county commissioner, who is Kevin Wayne, um, we are going to do that. And so for the board members who are not on the committee and are potentially interested in attending that meeting, if you can just let me know, um, we'll try to schedule around folks availability if folks want to come into town for that or if you're, if you're around and want to do that meeting. Um, and those are the highlights for us this month, Swin. Awesome. Uh, I, I want to touch on uh, one thing real quick that that Ann mentioned uh, over the next weeks or, you know, may take us a couple of months to get to this. Uh, I think that as an organization, we're going to be working on uh, an island survey, right? We really need to survey membership and island stakeholders to, to know, you know, what, where's everyone's head at, right? What should we be working on? We're, we're, we're gathering information on, you know, changing zip codes. Is that something that, that the island wants? Is that something that the island needs? And, and for those that don't know, right now our zip code is tied to Captiva. And I don't know, Bill, you can chime in on it. Um, in the past, I don't know if it's still a thing. If you wanted, you could get a free PO box over on Captiva if you want to figure out voting over or driving all the way around to check your mail on Captiva. It makes probably more sense that we're aligned with St. James City or Boquilia or something like that. Um, however, there are consequences to that. Things like insurance rates are calculated and based on zip codes. Um, 
maybe that raises, maybe that lowers our interest rates. I don't know. But um, we, you know, we don't want to just go do something if everyone's like, why are we doing that? So we're going to ask everyone soon o- over the next couple of months, we, we're going to develop a, a survey and get it out to the island um, to get, you know, great feedback. Hmm. All right. Anything, any other questions or anything for government affairs committee? All right, we'll go to David in communications. is her name. All right, um, so um, just one thing I guess that I was gonna mention too, Swin, is that uh, for the folks that are new to the committee structure that each committee has their chair and I'm the chair of the, this particular one. We have uh, other board, another board member, at least one, uh, but Swin is a, a, a member of each committee. So he's involved with all of the, at, at some point, not doing the work, but being aware of the work. So as president, he's a, you know, a, um, an ex officio member of each committee. So he's involved in that. So that helps kind of tie it all together. Um, so the, the communications committee, as Swin mentioned, kind of is supporting the other committees and communicating out, um, operating the website and keeping it up to date, um, communicating with via email. Um, so some of the accomplishments that we did, and I'm talking probably from the last, this is from, since the, the last general membership meeting, uh, we did create a, a, a actual UCCA Zoom account. So in the past, we had been using um, their depth ministry Zoom account. So UCCA owned its own uh, Zoom account. And um, then we also purchased a survey tool, which is named Typeform. Uh, if you've seen any communication from SWIN related to uh, one of the events that's going on with the recycling, uh, you'll see that that tool is used um, to, to actually conduct a survey, uh, ask questions, get people to step through the process uh, of, of answering questions. It even has the functionality to be able to pay. Um, so for in this case, there was an, an option to collect fees as a part of the survey if you chose a certain option. So it's a very flexible tool, but it's gonna be able to be used for communicating uh, and getting input from the membership as, as um, and, and from the public or the, the, the as Swin mentioned. Um, we did create a, a Google Drive for UCCA where all the documents related to UCCA now exist, not on my computer somewhere. So if it, you know, it burns up or you know, I get by a bus or whatever it is, we have a problem. So all those are centrally located. Um, Swin has access to those files and, and other board members can find them out there. They're secured, uh, but they're not, they're, they're secured in a way that they're backed up by Google themselves. So it's not something that restricted just to a hard drive that could crash um, and lose our information. Uh, we continue to post minutes for board meetings uh, and uh, for the general membership meeting, I wanted to remind everybody that this, this is being recorded and after, the, after each general membership meeting, uh, I produce a video of this recording of this meeting so uh, it, it usually takes uh, two or three days for that to, to a process to be complete because I actually have to produce the video, clip it down, put a header on it so that you see nice images at the beginning. Uh, but that being said, if you aren't able to see or attend the board meeting, I'm sorry, the membership meetings, you'll always find them on the membership meeting page. So you could always watch it again, or if you're interested and you miss something, taking notes perhaps, and you're interested or whatever. Uh, those will be done. Um, this month's will probably take a little bit longer because I'm out of town and I have to produce that on my home computer. So it'll probably be a couple of weeks for that to get posted um, this time. Uh, we did a newsletter. Hipkins uh, produced that letter or actually wrote the letter. We then did the, the co- collection on the, the printing, coordinating of that, e- emailing out the electronic copy for those who are signed up for electronic news delivery. And the paper versions were mailed out so hopefully everybody got those um, and um, received them for this last quarter. Uh, we did a refresh on the website. So if you go to the UCCA website, you'll see um, there's, there's, I try to continue to refresh the, the page to have different things on there. There's some information about reporting mosquito um, or LCC power outages, those things that begin to be a thing this time of year. So that we got the committee 
organizations out there. Um, that'll continue to improve as, as we get more information about what each committee is doing. So that'll be a separate page for each one. You can go to find more information about that. Um, we have the information about the recycle project that's out there, just information that's uh, timely. We've had some blog posts that we've done. So about the new board appointees, uh, we've had information about the wildlife uh, event that went on on the island. So that kind of thing uh, was sent out. You should be getting emails if you're subscribed to the UCCA email list when those things happen. So you should see them in your email box and have a little box to say, click here to read more and you can read the full blog post. So those continue to go out and as events occur or different things happen events, we try to get those out on the website. And uh, for those that don't aren't subscribed to the email list, um, you could go on the website. There's a place to subscribe to that. And if you're uh, not aware of that or you're not getting them and you think you should be, just let this email info at Upper Capti Pacific Association dot uh, org and I'll get that and then I'll make sure you get those emails if, and help you through that if they're getting caught in your spam folder or whatever. Um, I, I think that's uh, all that I have as far as the communication committee outside of supporting the other events and I think other board members might talk about those efforts that they're ongoing. Um, and that's all I have. Awesome. Any uh, questions, comments for David? All good. All right, we'll move on to membership and revenue generation. I, I had Melissa down to, to present that, but I think Kevin is presenting that. I am, Swin. Uh, Marlene and Melissa bullied me, so I'm, I'm, I'm the guinea pig. <laughs> the, the, the newbie get, got picked on here. Just kidding. Um, so yeah, so revenue uh, generation, uh, membership, um, you know, what we focused on talked about was obviously the obvious which was significantly increasing our our membership numbers um that's goal number one two and three uh, as swin said earlier we have about 110 our, our short-term goal i think is to minimally get back to 100 at least 150 uh members on the, on the low end and i think um ultimately our goal is to have every every member every person on island to be to become a member um, our focus really to get that is to kind of show value in, in what UCCA is bringing to bringing to the membership and, and why it's a benefit to them. Um, so we kind of have some short term, long term things. So, you know, long term, we'd like to be able to provide um, a, a phone book for the island for everyone to be able to be able to be in contact with people, uh, a welcome guide for both uh, new homeowners as well as uh, renters and, and those people who rent. Um, just kind of outlaying what what the do's and don'ts are of being on island and and what the best practices of things are. So that's kind of long term stuff of of where we'd like to be um, down the road. <clears throat> Short term, what kind of what we're working on right now are some things for uh, for October. So we have um, a chili cookoff in in October, which will happen at the firehouse. Um, and you know more details to come on that, but that that project is is well underway and and, and making progress there. Um, we also have a home and garden tour set up for uh, the twenty third of October as well. We've got three three homes identified: um, Happy Hours, Main Deck, and Gypsy Wind that are going to let us tour uh, their homes, and then we'll have a garden tour. I think we have two two gardens lined up so far. We're looking for one more. Um, so we'll do three homes for the tour, three homes for the for the garden and and uh, and then close it out with with some wine um, after the event. So we're looking forward to that. And that's been a big focus of ours. And then we are working on a island uh, recipe book, um, which we will start hopefully at the recycling event uh, in May. Uh, we'll start the Dropbox. We had a lot of help from uh, from Candy Highsmith, who's you know putting together a website for that for us. Uh, we'll have that a bit available for people to Dropbox their recipes in, take pictures of their recipes, a little story of their of the recipe. So we're really excited to be able to start working on that and put that together and and uh, and get that out to uh, to those who are interested um, on the island. Um, as, as Swin mentioned earlier, and I think Bill touched on or David about the recycling event that's coming up, we're taking that as an opportunity for a membership drive as well. So we'll be there to help collect um, 
the items that people want to get rid of. And at the same time, hopefully for those members who, for those, pe those people who aren't members, uh, it'll be an opportunity for them to, uh, to join since the event is free for members. Um, and uh, if they're not, they can certainly join up on the spot there. So uh, we're looking, looking forward to that. We'll have some postcards printed with some applicate membership applications uh, to hand out that we'll be able to use for, uh, for additional drives um, for members uh, with QR codes there. So um, a lot of work behind the scenes. What we also talked about was um, kind of setting a calendar up for the remainder of this year and, and, and looking forward to next year. You know, we're already into basically into May. So uh, we were a little behind the eight ball in, in terms of the overall calendar, but we talked about events, uh, bringing back St. Patrick's Day celebrations. Uh, maybe some other events like a square dance or karaoke that we would we would look to do and then uh, take advantage of, of things like Turtle Week and, and things of that nature. So we'll work on that calendar, but those four items with the recycling event are really what our focus are at the present time. Awesome. Questions, comments, anything for Kevin and the uh, Membership Revenue Generation Committee? So I'll help, I'll help Kevin out on, on the membership value too. Just, just as a reminder, on the website, there is a members only section. It's on the top menu and if you've not been there and you haven't logged in, you should. On that, there's a member directory that exists. That member directory is current as the information that you've maintained in your profile online. So you can have to log in to get this. So only members can access it. But anytime you want to find any information about phone numbers or where someone's up to, you can like just connect and click member directory. And also all the newsletters are online. All the info, the, board, the meeting for board min, meeting, minutes for board meetings are there. Uh, so all that data is there on the member only section. So that's something that members can enjoy. And the member directory for me is pretty handy because there's many times I want to reach out to somebody and don't know where they, they're at, what house name they, they have or whatever it is, that's all contained there. Yeah. And, I, and I'll add part, part of the, the goal of the, the island recipe book or cookbook is to produce something uh, that, that isn't just targeted at uh, property owners, homeowners and island residents to, to have something we can actually sell to visitors on the island and I think Matias is on here. I had pinged Matias a month or so ago, and um, you know he said that we could definitely consign something like that with them. Hopefully, we can do it in a few places. But that that could be a revenue generator where we're not we're not going back to the well, the same well all the time. And, hey, members, will you guys donate money and, and give money, right? Um, so something that I think the the visitors would love. Um, we'll take home keepsake um, and enjoy the island cooking after they've left and everything. So awesome. Good stuff, y'all. Uh, any other questions for that committee? Anyone? Nope. Uh, so that uh, leads into Paula and the community committee. And, and Paula, I'll just say before you dive in, I've got the island-wide recycling event and island cleanup as its own uh, item after that, so you don't have to dive into that right now. All right, sorry about that. So that's our main thing that we've been focusing on is the island cleanup and the recycling. Um, uh, the other thing that we were looking at, um, they talked about also is the guidebooks. I had been in contact with um, a company called Touch Stay um, they offer a really amazing um, guidebook. Um, they gave us some pricing for it. And what we're looking at is possibly doing a one um, guidebook that has all the information for the island. We can do a renter's one and we can also do a homeowner's one because on Facebook, a lot of people are always asking like for construction people, flooring people. Um, this is stuff that we think that we can possibly do a fundraiser for it where if companies want to be included in this guidebook they pay a yearly fee and then it goes out to all the homeowners or all the members at least whatever we decide on um and it'll be the basic information like the island the ferries the grocery services the 
excursions um, for the renters and then for the homeowners, it would be the construction people um, and information on who to contact for certain situations. Um, this is one where it'll be one main guidebook, but then each homeowner, if they want, if they're renters, can um, include it and add their own information to the guidebook because we know property managers want different ferries or grocery services. So they'll be able to customize it to their home and they just pay um, a yearly fee for it, which is a pretty reasonable, it's 99 if you have one home. And if you have two home, it's $150. And if you have three homes, it goes down in price. So property managers can also do this and have a broad number of homes for them and just charge their, um, their property managers a, a lesser price for home guides too. So it's really exciting. Um, and I think it would be really beneficial to have all the same information for all the homes. So that's our next big thing that we're trying to work on. Yeah, so that's um, that's probably uh, an area where two of our committees sort of converged. Obviously, Kevin, that you know sort of yep. leads into a little bit of what you guys talked about. Um, so I, I would suggest that we have Kevin and Paula sort of you know coordinate between committees on that. But so so everyone's clear on it. Basically, what would it be? And I I use Touch Day, so I'm very familiar with it. Is at the UCCA level, we would basically create the island template, right? So if it were something for homeowners who rent their homes, it would include, like Paula said, everything from the ferries to the restaurants and everything. Also, we could include things like um, community standards, right? Like you're vacationing in a, in a residential neighborhood, keep your noise down, right? All, all those um, things that we wanna convey to people. And then it'd be, um, you know, the, the homeowner's option to take it and, and change that template to fit what they need to have it fit and everything. So it wouldn't be changing the template. You would have one broad. Right. They, they would have there, they yeah. would start with the template and then they would, they would create their right. custom one. Yeah. Right. So, any questions on that? I do, I do think that uh, there's also an opportunity for a physical welcome guide. Um, you know, the, the, the sort of old school, you know, hardcover book that you'd see in a hotel, you know, about the area. Um, lots of pictures in it, island pictures with, with the messaging that we want to get across to visitors um, as they're seeing those big, lovely pictures of manatees and dolphin and birds and, and everything on our island. So something I, I'd love for us to get to at some point. Hey, uh, Paula, do you want to speak to uh, where we are? Because this comes up a lot on um, the styrofoam coolers. Yeah, so the styrofoam coolers, I've talked to Publix. I keep reaching out almost every week to see <laughs> an update. And it's all on stock. They just can't get them in stock right now. But they are switching as soon as they're able to get them in stock. They will do the eco-friendly coolers for us. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to reach out regarding the styrofoam coolers and the recycling event that's going on. I, I, I have. They, they've asked how many that they should expect because they'll have to deal with them. And, and I was like, I have no idea. How about 50 to a hundred right now? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's going to be more than that, but yeah. So what we're trying to do is um, cause we do need to have containers to put some of the like paint and stuff in. So we were thinking maybe using styrofoam coolers and then being able to get those styrofoam coolers off of the island that are all a lot of people have in their garages or store you know just waiting to be able to get rid of them um at least this way we're hopefully the, the landfill can take them and do something with them instead of just throwing them in, in the landfill and then we also have the homeowners party that lisa walker is putting on that we will be getting involved with hopefully if lisa's on the call right now <laughs> i don't think she is and that's in October. Right, um, 
Well, with, with that, do you want to go ahead and lead in and, and let's talk about the, the recycling event so everyone fully understands what that is? Yep. So um, we are going to have on May 13th, which is the Friday, we'll be able to have drop-offs where you'll be able to bring your chemical, like oil, um, paint, any toxins that you have in the house that you wouldn't normally, old propane tanks, um, you'd be able to bring um, to, for us to bring to recycle. Uh, and then if you're unable to be on the island, then if you have this stuff, you can reach out to your property managers or to us and we can come and pick them up from your house too, to be able to get those off the island for you. It's free for members and then $50 if you're a non-member of UCCA. Um, and we'll have two stations, one over so, sort of by the airstrip mainstay area, the island realtor. Yeah, I, Islander Realty area, yeah. Mary Walker's lot. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then we'll have one that's right where the com community center was going to go uh, right on, across from NCIC. And we'll have two trailers and tables set up to take the information. And we need you to sign up because we do have to give documentation to Lee County of where this stuff is coming from, which house is producing it. Um, and then on Sunday, I'm going to be posting the event for the island cleanup. It'll be like we did in like um, they did in October where we sign up for a street or the beach and we go and collect all the garbage that we find and <clears throat> collect that. And then we have some really cool cups to hand out for people who are participating in that talking about recycling on the island too. And Davenport has graciously um, offered to barge all of this stuff over for us for the recycling event. And we have um, people volunteering to bring the U-Hauls over to the recycling center on Monday, the awesome. 16th. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so big, big island recycling event, you know, we're, we're hopeful that everyone takes advantage of it. It's really a good time to empty out the garage, the closet, the cabinets of old insecticides, cleaners, what, you know, paint, whatever old stuff you have laying around and small electronics. So computers, printers, monitors, televisions, um, just no major appliances and, and generally even small kitchen appliances, they, they won't take. It's mainly, mainly things that would have computer chip type things in them. If you're on, on the call and you haven't received an email or you've not seen it go, if you just go to the website, there's a banner on the main page and there's a page dedicated that, to that event with information about what you can recycle, what you can't, and when, how to sign up, all that stuff. So pretty straightforward. Yep. Bill, did you have your hand out, up? Bill Bowman? I, I just had one question about the recycling. Davenport's taking it all to the mainland, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Davenport's so taking it over to the mainland, and we, we've got people that are lined up to hook up the trailers and take them to the Lee County Recycling drop -off. So, so it's no cost to us, is that correct? For, for members, it's free. For, for non-members, we're charging I mean, I mean, I mean, we're, not, we're not paying anything for it, that's my question. We're not. Uh, we have to. We have to pay for like the U-Hauls and the U-Haul yeah. and um, that kind of and equipment for it. A ballpark. So, how much is that going to cost? Well, so let me back up real, real quick. We we did a sponsorship drive and we raised three thousand dollars from sponsors. Um, Tortuga Properties. Uh, Paul, I don't know if you have the list in front of you. Um, it's on the website. We've got all the sponsors yep. listed. Uh, so we've raised money. Uh, this will actually be uh, a net gain event for UCCA. We will, we will make money off of this event, not uh, spend money. So uh, through the sponsorships, it's covered. Uh, we're, we've already got a few people that have signed up and, and there's a donation option there. We've taken in a few donations already. Uh, and then for non-UCCA members, uh, it's $50, which is really our attempt to try to get you to join. May I make a May I make a comment? You bet. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. So, just for information, so hard. sponsors are Tortuga Properties, Team Davenport, 
lunar tides, sal chalets, sea cells, durable, property management, boats and fun, and a good grocery delivery. So uh, re really for everyone on the call, I mean, spread the word. I mean, this is a really good time to get this stuff off our island. It's, it's, it's really part of an effort, you know, that we're starting to de-junk the island. I think we'll, we'll have more uh, events like this with different scopes, right? So um, possibly even full on like, you know, the charcoal grills that get dumped on properties, all that kind of stuff. At some point, we'll, we'll have an effort to rid our island of that stuff. All right, any other questions for Paula or the, the community committee on the recycling event? All right, we will move on to the next, which is the fire district town hall. Uh, Chief Martin reached out to me and David, um, I guess David's been over a month ago, I, I think originally, uh, in, in an effort to um, sort of reach out to the community and, and get a dialogue going with the community. I think, you know, some of that effort is to get in front of the community before uh, the fire district's upcoming referendum on um, renewing the special assessment uh, in November. And so we've done, we did, you know, several town halls last year. I think that overall they were well received. We did with the Lee County Sheriff's uh, office. We did it a couple of them regarding the safe Harbor marinas development and then with LCEC. So I, I saw this as a good time to, to ask chief Martin if, Hey, he'd just do a town hall with the community and he's agreed. So over, uh, Actually, I'll need to bring this to the board, but uh, tentatively, we've got him scheduled for a town hall on June 22nd, and we'll come up with a nice, you know, thick list of questions that we think the community will want to ask him, so he is ready to respond to those, and then it'll be an open forum at the end for anyone to, to ask, you know, Chief Martin questions about the fire department, the fire district, um, things that he can answer. He won't be able to answer for the fire commissioners uh, and, and their duties, but he can speak in terms of the fire chief and, and the, the main department and how it runs. And by the way, apologies that my dog is at, at my door. <laughs> if y'all can hear him in the background. Um, I thought somebody so anyway, was... So, <laughs> So uh, we'll have that, that town hall with the fire district coming up in June. Any questions, comments about that? All right, brings us really to the, the last thing that, that we have on the agenda, uh, which is just discussing island growth. Um, I talk to a lot of people on the island daily, weekly, um, so I, I hear a lot of feedback and um, there's a lot going on, right? So recently we've had the sale of NCIC um, with the new group who I think is rebranding that as uh, the Island Club at North Captiva. Um, there's the sale of Mainstay to Safe Harbor Marinas. That's the same company that owns Pineland Marina, owns Island Girl and was originally trying to do the treehouse uh, development over off Point House Trail. And then um, you know, really par partly, I, I just look at uh, our loss of commercial parcels on, on the island. And, and it makes me think, you know, in 10 years and 20 years, will we have enough uh, property for commercial uses that property owners and homeowners actually need services for. Um, and then, you know, with some of this consolidation of things, uh, I, I can see the oncoming onslaught of the potential of a lot of day visitors to the island. So really want to just, you know, without this devolving into two hours of discussion and, and question, one to sort of hear from you know the members and community that are on 
uh, their thoughts of sort of recent developments and the future and, and what do you think? Anyone? No one? Swint? Yes, sir, Bill. Okay. Uh, I don't know where you're going with this, but let's let's talk about the, the new owners and all that kind of stuff that's going on. Um, okay. Once you have venture capital involved, you know venture capital, don't you, very much? Um, it's really about profits. And so I don't really see things from the perspective of homeowners changing materially as it relates to the club. That's my opinion. Because it can be profit driven. I don't have a problem with that. I understand it. I mean, I've, I've been that way all my life. Uh, but when, when you're not part of it, uh, you're not necessarily against it, but it affects you. Okay. And so uh, I, I don't, I, I honestly believe that things will not get long term as, opposed, as it applies to people that own uh, houses that don't rent. I don't think long term it's going to get any better. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think it's going to get any worse. Uh, but I, I don't think it's getting any better. And uh, that's just my opinion. I just want to let y'all know where I think about it. Right Did you want to ask something? Uh, Anyone else? We'll let everybody use it in the weekend thing. But, um, that's sort of out of there. Yeah, I guess. So. No other comments? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Bill, I'll answer a, a little bit. I, I don't have an opinion on, you know, new ownership of the club. I think, you know, it's going to take a minute for them to figure out what they're doing. Um, yeah. I, I don't know that any, I don't know that any of us know their business plan for the future. Uh, I, I know that I'm just, I'm a little bit concerned, um, not with any of these singular businesses, but I'm concerned about the the future availability of, of services for homeowners. And, and the number of homeowners is going to grow, right? The next hundred homes, they're coming, <laughs> right? They're, you see yep. them being built daily. The, the only thing that is stopping the flow right now is there aren't enough builders and not enough workers and not enough supplies um, to put more up faster. So, uh, there is a concern. I mean, you see it every day. People are like, hey, how can I get a plumber? How can I get this? And, and I like that. So there's there's a very limited amount of commercial space on our island. 50% or more of our commercial parcels are actually residential homes, right? Al almost everything around Point House Trail and, and over uh, towards Kingfisher is zoned C1, but, you know, easily 50% of that land have homes on it. And as, as some of these other things consolidate uh, into businesses that, you know, and Bill, like you said, people can be in business, people will do whatever they want. Um, but a lot of the businesses, I think, are going to start pointing uh, away from homeowners and, and to just, you know, other people visiting the island. And when those businesses aren't serving the homeowners, what do we do when, when there's there aren't enough businesses here, you know, serving homeowners and you can't get a repair guy over because there's nowhere for him to dock, uh, nowhere for him to land. As things grow and get more restrictive, people are going to be like, nope, not on my dock. Don't, don't yep. dock here. No more here. So, you know, look, it's, it's a concern. <laughs> I, I'm, I'll tell you this, I am not anti-development. People have their rights. They have property rights. They, they can come develop. Um, so me bringing this up, isn't me saying, oh, we've got to stop this, right? It's, it's what do we do to protect ourselves moving forward that we've got enough infrastructure sliced off, you know, for homeowners. No, I, I totally, I totally agree. They, they have the right to do whatever they want to do. I don't, I don't have a problem with that whatsoever, but you know, if, if they buy, uh, barnacles over there and you can't and they, they own the only boat over there and if uh what happens to Dan, if davenport's gone okay i mean what do we do then good good question uh i'll, I'll answer i'll answer that briefly i had a a very 
long detailed conversation with Danny in early February. Uh, he told me he has no plans to retire anytime soon. He's having too much fun, wouldn't know what to do with himself if he didn't have a place to go. Uh, sounds like he is preparing to transform that into a family business. I believe his um, son-in-law or future son-in-law and his, his son are, are now there working with him and I think have eyes uh, to take over that business. I specifically asked Danny, if you did decide to sell, would you please consider selling to a group of homeowners to which he th said that is a great idea and yes. So um because you're, you're you're right you know if if danny sold and, and you had someone who didn't care about the island who only cared about profits it could be difficult um and if that person decided they didn't want to be in the trash business it would become difficult <laughs> amen thank hey, you so when i was just going to say that one thing we can do in terms of to answer your question of how do we protect ourselves is to have the government relations committee communicate with the appropriate people at Lee County, because ultimately they're going to be the ones that are going to be on the forefront of things getting approved. And so if they know that the homeowners are organized and active and interested in development, then they'll let us be part of that process. If they think nobody cares, which honestly is what they do think now, just based on the little bit I've dealt with them, we're not going to have a, a communication stream and have any input or influence, but if we can have that influence, and I don't know if the zip code thing impacts that in terms of who our city um, or Lee County commissioner is, um, but that would be another thing to think about because that commissioners vote on those developments as they come through, having them, you know, kind of in our pocket or not in our pocket, all that will make a difference. <clears throat> And that is a big goal of the Government Affairs Committee is to build those relationships and everything. So, David? Yeah, so I, I think, you know, I've, I've been visiting the island for over 30 years and I've been living here for five years. And it feels like right now, even though there is a lot of, there's a lot of change, right? So the new club ownership, the, uh, the, uh, mainstay sale, all those things. Um, it seems that, you know, UCCA has kind of like turned over the board. There's been some board member change at Safety Harbor. Um, it feels like even though these are changing times, it's also a like an opportunity for us to engage as as a different, the different groups that at some points were kind of stand off to ourselves to become more coordinated and just what, we, what we've been saying is like, have a representation to Lee County and have a, a representation to the business community to say, look, it's all in our best interest to work together here. Uh, and you're gonna make your profits and make your fair share, but also you can serve the community. And, and I think there's an, at least an, as with new people coming in, there's always an opportunity to, to kind of frame that discussion in a positive way to engage them and to, you know, to like, look, if you, you work with us and we'll help like everything will be better if we all work together. And I think that's that's the message I think that we collectively as Islanders and even those that aren't here full-time for sure, but that want the best for the island is that we have that, strike that balance, right? We should start reaching out to those those home, the sorry, the business owners and to the people that are doing that, those things um, to kind of, or, or the different groups that have at points like kind of gone to their corners to kind of go back to like, look, it's a, it's in our best interest to, to work together here. We have new new you know management or new ownership in different places. Let's find out how we can work together uh, for a change and, and engage with Lee County, uh, like you said, and uh, to to let them know that we're like all in this together. And I think that will help us to, to gain that traction that we've not had. It won't fix everything, but. We'll all, we'll, all, we'll all go down swinging together if it does, or we'll at least have the option to, to make a difference. So I think that's what I feel about. Agreed. Bill? Yes, sir. Uh, well, to Holly and, and David's point, Other Bill. Um, to me, Lee County and Lee County commissioners, and specifically our commissioner, Commissioner One, uh, is it Ruan or? Kevin Ru Ruan. Yeah. Ruan. Uh, that there are less than uh, 70 to 80 
uh, islanders, uh, island homeowners that are registered voters on the island. Yep. And when we go talk to them, um, the truth is we're really not a voting block that they that no, they no stick anything, anything that they do or don't do. Right. And so really, <clears throat> if we want to have more say in what happens at the Lee County Commission, it's going to require more people to decide uh, to be part part year residents and become voters. The point is, is that with all of those sales that happened over the last two years since COVID, <clears throat> a lot of the homes, especially in Safety Harbor Club, but but elsewhere, all of the, a lot of those folks were, were owners that did not rent. They were snowbirds or, or winter residents, and they were voters. And when all of those uh, properties sold, many of those voters went away, and they haven't been replaced by the new owners because the new owners uh, don't feel the need to uh, to specify the island as their home of record and, and their taxes. It, it, so that, it, can be, kind of it can be more complicated than that, though, really. I mean, uh, wherever you vote, if you, if you have two houses, like I live in Texas, I drove home today from the island uh, two days, and I, I can't vote there. If I do, I lose my homestead ex exemption here. OK, um, and that is I understand what you're saying, but it's, it's really more complicated than that, in my opinion. It's always more complicated than. than <laughs> but anyway, the point is, we we as an island are 70 voters or less. And in the overall what, scheme of things, the county. What, you, what you're saying is we need a lot more voters. And I agree with you 100 percent. And yeah, I think, um, you know, just vis-a-vis -vis the relationship with the county commissioners, I think it's important to establish that, but I also think it's important for all of us to go in wise, eyes wide open on what they can and cannot do for us. So if we're talking about private land sales, they're not going to stop a private land sale. You know, if you're talking about rezoning property, I think that's something that the commissioners could help with. So. I guess when when I heard you talk about sort of your overarching tee up here of us not having enough resources long term, you know, that to me is less a zoning issue unless we want to change residential zoning to business zoning, which I think would be, I mean, I don't know that we'd end up with a, a consensus on that, right? Um, but somehow coming up with a long term plan that we think works, I think it's going to include, it's going to have to include acquiring property. Um, so I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to totally agree. And, and that's partly what I'm getting at. It's, it's that, and the, the problem is there's not, there's not many things out there. There's really nothing out there right now. Um, you never know what'll pop up from time to time, but uh, when you look at what's developed, uh, and what's available currently zoned commercial. A uh, cu couple more things that are th developed by the people who already own those parcels, and there's no commercial land left for anything. So it, it's concerning. I mean, you would hope that the county at some point would be like, oh, you don't have any commercial land because it's all developed. Uh, yeah, we'll have to rezone something. But, but the, where do you do that? In the middle of Hidden Lane, <laughs> you know. Um, so I don't know. It's uh, it's something to look at. I think uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see the next uh, five to ten years and and what's going on on the island. But um, I think the discussion needs to keep going. On, like, what? How how are we going to make sure that we're all uh, that we have services that we need ten years from now available to us? and everything because it, it is getting more restrictive people are going you know don't park in front of my house don't you know don't walk across here you know so it's uh it's gonna be a tough one moving forward all right any any other comments on any of that nope nope all right any other business 
No other business. Oh, I'm just making sure you, you've got your hand up, but I assume that's just from earlier. Yeah, cool. Uh, all right, public comment on any non-agenda items. Now's your chance. All right. Hey, Sven. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hey, Lisa. Sorry, sorry to jump in late. I don't know if it's the right time, but I just thought I'd throw it out there to remind everyone of the homeowners party on October 22nd. Yes. Yes. I, I feel like last year we had such a great attendance, but I had no really a, of communicating other than Facebook. So I thought, why not throw it out here? Love it. We will be there for sure. Thank you. Hey, Swin. Uh, yes. Who's that? It's Aunt Caroline. It's Aunt Caroline. Hey, I just wanted to um, put out there that in, in relation to Lisa's homeowners party, I think we're looking at trying to get some homeowners together to throw a party for island workers, maybe the day before Lisa's party or the day after, just for island workers. If anyone's interested in participating in that, let Swin know or let me know or let Candy Highsmith know. Yeah, I think that's an awesome idea. Okay. All right, cool. Any, any other public comment? Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make it. All right, Kevin, do we have a second? We'll second. All right, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you for everyone who showed up. Appreciate you.